So I'm, I'm looking at you or yes, looking at the you, camera? Yes, you have to look at me. Look yes. at you. Yep. Start. My name is Sohail Daud. I'm currently posted at the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi as the head of the FBI for South Asia. How many complaints does the FBI receive from American citizens? It's approximately, it used to be about 120 a day. Now, this year it is 140 complaints a day. That's the tip of the iceberg. What is the FBI doing about these fake callers and uh, these call centers? So our goal is to identify the victims in U.S. If we can identify the subjects in India and then prepare packets or information that we can share with uh, the law enforcement in India, because while we have the responsibility for protecting U.S. citizens, the FBI does not have the authority to operate in foreign land. So we rely heavily um, and we work very closely with the local law enforcement and Indian federal law enforcement for um, combating this transnational uh, cybercrime. How do these uh, scammers dupe Americans from here? Yeah, so for that, you know, we have to understand the like, why this is so successful in India, right? There's a huge uh, population that speaks English in India. Uh, the internet is free, uh, not free, but it's there is no restrictions on the internet. You see that you, you'll have Indians who are living in maybe even the remote villages who are willing to willing to and they're able to learn the way the Americans talk. They're willing to uh, learn through YouTube, through Facebook on how to convince Americans to send money over. A lot of times people don't realize they've been scammed. When they realize they've been scammed, they're actually very Im embarrassed about it. And depending on the amount of losses, which we have seen anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few hundred thousand dollars, which is the complete life savings, this can completely destroy somebody's life. Can you tell us about some cases that have stayed with you? Uh, we have had cases where uh, in one particular incident, an elderly gentleman lost all his life savings and, they, and the scammers kept calling him and he could no longer take it and he ended up committing suicide. I mean, let's just take a moment and think about you know, the damage it can do to somebody. Another example that kind of sticks with me is a case where the, uh, the victim told the scammer that the money I'm giving you is what I had saved for my cancer treatment. I have no, no more money left for my cancer treatment and the scammer did not hesitate for a second and he took that money. So, you know, these are the stories that stick with you. This is, this is a crime of, you know, there's monetary loss, but there's a lot of humanity that's lost with it as well.